Okay, we're back. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about inpatient coding and the link between things such as hospital acquired conditions, present on admission, and other topics that relate to inpatient coding, MSDRG reimbursement, and other important topics. Okay, here are some key terms, some of these you may be familiar with, some of them you may not be familiar with, but these are things that we're talking about in the field of inpatient coding. And we'll get into more of the details right now. Concurrent coding is a system where you're coding while the patient's still in house. They're still in the hospital and receiving care. And this was something that was popular for a while, went out of fashion, now is coming back a little bit. And the idea is if we can get these hospitalizations coded as soon as possible and coded accurately, it keeps our accounts receivable down and is financially beneficial to the hospital. This runs into a problem because some of the different types of discharge documentation we don't have. Typically, if somebody's in-house, we're not going to have all the progress notes done. We certainly won't have the discharge summary done. And the discharge summary is critical for coding hospitalizations. We can parse things out from it, but the discharge summary is invaluable because it's a concise document that covers and summarizes the patient's entire hospitalization. Talks about how the, where the patient is going to be transferred and so on. Sometimes if a patient is expired, we refer to it as a death summary because the patient died, obviously. Some very important things to think about with this is that, again, as we've seen on some of the EHR Go exercises and referenced in the book and the official guidelines, there is a difference between how outpatient coding is done versus inpatient coding. If inpatient coding, if we have a diagnosis and it's referred to as suspected, probable, likely, questionable, ruled to be ruled out or some other indefinite type of term, we code it as if the patient existed. We don't do this in the outpatient setting, rather we use the signs or symptoms that had the patient coming into the outpatient setting. And again, as mentioned here, we do not code probable, suspected, questionable, rule out, or working diagnosis in the outpatient setting. If a patient's getting diagnostic services only in the inpatient setting, these are not coded. We only code them once the findings are confirmed by the provider. Now we're going to talk about present on admission indicators. This is critically important. Hopefully some of you will be exposed to this in the inpatient setting. And that's all I have for you. Come back for the next video lecture where we'll discuss present on admission indicators. We'll see you then.